Hi and welcome to episode 2 of CNC Router Beginner to Pro. And one of the projects that I think you should tackle like right off the get-go is to make a spoil board for your machine. And that is what is coming up right now. So your spoil board really serves three purposes. Number one, it will protect your machine bed or the substructure of your machine when you cut through your project. Let's say you have to cut the entire perimeter of your project out, then the spoil board is underneath it and you cut into it. Number two is that you can fasten your project down onto the spoil board to hold it in place. There are several different ways of doing that. We get into that later. Number three, and I think that is the most important one, is that once you surface your spoil board, that surface will become parallel to the x and y axis. And that means that the distance between your tool and the spoil board will be the same no matter where you are on your router table. That is really important if you start carving, for instance, where just a little bit of a difference in heights will show up in your project. So here are some of the design considerations when you make your spoil board. If you have a substructure that involves this 8020 profile, like I have here in my hand or you see right there, then I recommend that you choose simply a full sheet of MDF. Uh, so just a slab of MDF that you put down and fasten down onto your table. However, if you have an 8020 extruded profile in the form that it already contains T-slots, like so it fills the whole table, then I recommend that you use slats and leave the profile section open so you can engage some T-bolts into it to fasten your material down. So if your heart is set on a T-track that you like to use, like this one right here, so I think a quarter inch T-track, uh, I got this from Rockler, then I recommend that you are using more screw holes than are provided in here because what will happen if you are like in between two screw holes, the whole T-track can lift up and uh, if you can use glue in addition under it, that will be good. One uh, perfect way to fasten it down, however, will be if you have the MDF material coming over the top edge of the T-track holding it down so it resists the force lifting up. I think that will be a really good design. My machine has an aluminum table and has a lot of locating and tapped holes. So I'm going to take advantage of that. I'll place a MDF board over the top of that and then drill a hole at every location for a clearance hole that is for an M8 screw. As you can see, I had to get a little bit creative clamping the plate down so that I can make the first row of holes and I have to remove subsequently a couple of clamps and then move them back in place once the router bit is out of the way. I have three tips for fastening your spoil board down. Tip number one is to use plenty of screws. Don't just use four in the corners or two per slats or something like that. That is not enough. And in my experience, when you fasten your project down, you have an upcut spiral bit, the board itself, so your project plus the spoil board will start to vibrate. Tip number two, when you're using screws to hold your project down, have a look at low profile head screws, those button head screws instead of a cap head screw. Um, the reason for that is you have way more material left on top of your spoil board to plane it down. And number three is, I'm not sure if you have seen those hammer nuts. They are an awesome way if you have to engage into an 8020 profile. You can just line all of them up, drop your project down and then fasten it. It can be a real headache to align those um, T-nuts that are in the 8020 profile when you want to fasten your spoil board down. So those hammer nuts make it really simple and easy. So before I screwed down the spoil board, I made sure there's nothing on the underside, no chips, no burrs. 
The next step will be to surface it and for that we need a surfacing bit like this one right here. I'd like to show you something that I did to this guy. Um, I have a tip right here and this is I removed two of the inserts. So this is a four insert surfacing bit. Two inserts are standing tall and two inserts are laying flat. They have a shearing action and those that are laying flat I simply removed them. The reason is I sometimes use it for plastic and also because on MDF things start to smoke and having only two flutes means that you can get slower. As a beginner I think it is so much easier if things happening slower and if you have a large cutter, let's say you have five or six cutting flutes on there or even four is enough, you really have to move that thing in warp speed so that you don't burn the wood. And having a smaller diameter with less flutes, you can slow down the RPM, 12,500 in this case, and a feed rate of only 800 millimeters per minute. Now, that is the minimum that I go. Most of the time, however, I go about two meters per minute and a depth of cut of about 0.4 millimeters. So here you can see I've cut my spoil board actually in half and that is so the front I can remove and then I can simply put this pallet that I have here, this is my um, plastic pallet, on or plastic spoil board if you want to and I screw that down <clears throat> and I need that because I machine aluminum relatively frequently and for that I, I can't use MDF because I use a coolant and that is just not compatible. I also find that the plastic material, in this case here Delrin, is holding the tape down better when I ever use the tape and superglue method. So yeah, I wanted to show you that as well. Okay, that was it for today. I hope you got something out of this and something useful out of it. I catch you in the next one. Take care. Bye.